Alrighty folks, I'm Red and this is World of Warships Midway, uh, in particular Dive Bombers. Uh, now, if you don't know me, I'm a Super Unicam Midway player. Uh, Super Unicam CV player, actually. I'm all right, in Nakuru as well, if I don't mind saying so myself. Um, now, I'm not saying this to bolster my ego. I'm actually saying this because um, I want to give you some knowledge and I just want you to know there's some weight behind it With in terms of I do have some experience. Uh, about 3,000 games, I think, in a CV. Um, but I've also played like 8,000 in DDs and 8,000 in cruisers as well. So um, not only do I know my CV very well, I know how to dodge CVs and how to best mitigate them. And this is lessons that everybody who's been playing this game lately needs to learn. Because some people think that CVs are overpowered. And they are um, to individuals. But collectively, if you there's lessons to be learned and they're all in this video. So if you're a cruiser, a DD or a battleship player... Um, Watch this video, there's plenty of examples where people do bad things. And if you're a CV player, there's quite a bit to learn as well. Especially what I call a perpendicular drop. It's in there, not many people know how to do it. Um, it's it's something I've never seen had done to me ever. So I don't even know if anybody knows they can do it. I'm sure the good players know they can do it. Um, so yeah, so a bit in there to learn. Um, uh, so yeah, so watch it um if you if you haven't seen the video before this i'll put in the link below it's all about uh, uh flak radiuses and um continuous damage radiuses it's quite a good video to watch because it does explain quite a bit and when i get into flak stacking later on uh, it'll tie in what you'll know when i mention flak stacking you'll know what i'm talking about um so i'll post in the comment section take a little look at that it's only 10 minutes long or something and um if you're not a subscriber maybe you'll subscribe um, if you are a subscriber, hit that like button. Oh, boys, hit it. Hit it now. Because uh, more likes, the more impressions, the more impressions, the more views, the more views, more subscribers. And eventually, when I get to a thousand, I'll be able to afford that pizza. Okay? Who will who, use work for fucking pizza on a Sunday night? That's all I want. That's all I want. Um, okay. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoy. In the beginning of the video, there's going to be a lot of shit for, for, for um, basics. Um, load out and uh, a couple of tips how to change your mini map and and key bindings um if you know all that stuff already just skip forward to the uh, perpendicular drop part if i remember i'll drop a timestamp in but it's basically uh, about five or six minutes in or something um okay i hope you enjoy please leave a comment and uh if you need any help i'm here man just give us a shout send a message in game or send a message here and uh, i'll be happy to help you out and if I missed anything or you think I'm being a retard and I'm saying something stupid, you can check out in there as well. If you want to. Bother me. <laughs> Alright, okay, cool. Have fun. See you soon. Okay, guys. So, uh, first off, let's talk about um, captain skills and equipment. Uh, the equipment is the easiest, I think. So, let's take a look at that. In slot 1, we want air group mod 1. Plus 20% to return in aircraft speed. That's pretty cool. Uh, engine boost gives you an extra 10% to engine boost time, which is great. The third slot, uh, I've got an extra 5% on my aerial torpedo speed. Uh, the other options are not that good. Torpedo bomber attack time, no aircraft uh, attack time, uh, plus 2 seconds. Um, you don't want to bother with these because once you get good at it, you don't really need the extra time. In the fourth slot, we've got uh, a bomber HP. Uh, for me... Uh, I like to have a lot, most of my damage comes from bombers, so since you're, with bombers they're pretty slow, and since you're in that bubble, you want to get as much HP on them as you possibly can. Uh, sixth slot, uh, fifth slot rather, is a Concealment Expert, uh, which is important, it gives you ship concealment, but it also gives you plane, uh, planes concealment, and this is quite important because it, I think it drops from like 8 to about, uh, from 10 to about 8.2 or something like that. And um, it really helps out with your approach. Um, there is something in you. If like control mod was this. Uh, restoration time plus two. Uh, that's a pretty good thing to have as well. But I find that. You know. The, the concealment is better. Just a little tip here. If you're playing clan wars. If you're in clan wars. This uh, squadron consumable is, is really good. Um, it gives your fighters. That you drop. Uh, well you can call them spotters if you want. Um, an extra 30 seconds on the on the time, so um, it, they jump from 60 seconds to one and a half minutes. Now this is, this is really good in in randoms as well, because um, you can kind of cock block, so to speak, um, a cap for so long that when you get back, you can just 
you can just keep on dropping planes on a cap and it just completely or you can just defend your dds in clan wars it's great because you know you defend people for longer and you can spot for longer so in clan wars or if you're that way inclined if you're a bit of a team player taking that action time to increase the fighter duration is a pretty good thing to have uh in the sixth slot we have um i've got the legendary which gives me an extra 10 percent of my hp bomb damage which is kind of good but really uh the aircraft hp is important as well kind of torn at the minute kind of testing out the legendary and um kind of torn between the extra hp pool i think i might swap back i don't know kind of missing finding that i'm losing quite a lot of planes lately so that extra seven and a half percent on top of the seven and a half percent you already got an extra 15 percent uh for your bombers hp pool which is quite good so i think i might swap back to that but if you don't have the legendary take that air groups mod too um cruising speed is not that good and of course the extra armament uh is uh just uh, something for your cv okay as for captain skills um on the first line i've got air supremacy minus five percent aircraft restoration time um uh, engine boost plus ten percent engine boost and last gasp which is pretty good thing to have um i see a lot of people in game dumping planes at the beginning you shouldn't really be doing that uh, what Last Gasp does, when you get down to the last uh, group, say you have four bombers, if you get down to the last group of fighters, you can dump two and it gives you a free turbo. That's kind of a good thing to do in Clan Wars uh, or in Ranked, uh, just to get that first initial spot. Um, it's quite handy sometimes as well to do initially to try to cock block a cap as soon as possible. Good thing to do with dive bombers because if you catch a DD out, you can get a drop, but obviously. The worst part of it is you've only got like three planes in it and uh, you probably won't get an attack off. So it's kind of good to cock block and uh, it comes in really handy as well when you're going in for you've got like four planes left and you've got no turbo and you lose the fourth plane and you go down to one group you get an extra turbo. So it's pretty pretty good thing to have. Um, improved engines plus two and a half percent squadron speed. That's pretty good. Um, because it's the midway and it does HE damage i take demolition expert gives me an extra five percent on fire and of course i've got survivability expert uh, which gives me more hp on the fourth line i've got site stabilization this is quite important uh, it gives you bomber torpedoes and attacking aircraft um an extra um increase on the on the you know reticule time so with torpedoes is super important but with the die bombers is really handy to have as well and then of course i got concealment expert which um, removes the distance that your fighters, more importantly, the distance where your fighters are detected from. Um, because the 10 kilometers is pretty sucky, but you can get that down to about eight, I think, with the captain skill and the um, the module as well. Drops it down to about 8.2, I think, maybe something. I'm not quite sure. Um, so eight kilometers is really cool. 10 kilometers is kind of sucky because it gives people more time to see you come in and it gives them more time to dodge, especially with torpedoes. So... Concealment the expert is uh, a, a big must must really okay i think that's it for loadout okay so i'm just gonna okay guys i just quickly want to cover um the key for knocking off your anti-air if you go to your settings and you go con to controls there's a disable anti-air and secondary guns button here um if you're a beginner everybody knows this but if you're a beginner you might not so just wanted to cover it fast so p knocks off your anti-air it's quite important if you're a dd player um because uh you don't want to be spotted by cvs and of course your guns give you away um but i would imagine if you get to like tier 4 or tier 5 you should know this by now uh, the other key if you're a cv player is uh releasing your planes uh, back to your CV, returning the squadron to the carrier. Uh, you might not know that you can do this, but obviously there are times when you just want to dump your planes and get them back to the CV because you might have found yourself in a bit of an awkward spot. I do this quite a lot. Um, a lot of people do this when they get into trouble. Uh, so it's a key that you should bind really to, to something and uh, learn how to use it. If you're a CV player and you don't use it, and you, uh, you, you, there are times when you definitely need to. So um, that is f by default and i've set it to numpad zero because i use curse keys except old school okay guys next thing i just quickly want to brush over is uh the mini map and it, you might not know this if you're a beginner oops press wrong key i don't know this if you're a beginner but if you press uh control uh i don't know if it's left control yeah if you press control your mouse obviously appears let's go to the cog at the top of the map uh just press that and you'll notice there's a couple of tick boxes here 
When is for detect uh, detectability range by air. That shows uh, when you're going to be spotted by planes, which you should always have on. And the other one is your AEA gun's maximum firing range. Now, I don't know if these are on by default because um, I've done it for all of my ships. So if it's not by default, you need to really know these numbers. These two, detectability by air and the more importantly, your AEA gun's maximum range. This is really important if you're a DD player because uh, you want to know uh, when you're going to be detected and when you should knock your AA off and on. Um, yeah, as a DD player, obviously, the detectability range by air is super important because that drops down to about three, three and a half kilometers for DDs. And once your once those planes get into that bubble, that's when you should be knocking your anti-air on if it's in range, obviously. Um, so, yeah, so just do that, put them on by default and get used to those circles on the minimap. And I'll tell you a lot then. Uh, if you're a beginner, I'll tell you a lot about when to knock your anti-air off and on. Okay, good stuff. Okay guys, so this is an example of what I call flak baiting. Um, it works well for dive bombers and sometimes rockets, but not so much for torpedoes, because obviously you want to get your aim right for torpedoes and, it, and the red cool. Since the nerf to the midway, the red cool um, gets smaller now a lot, a lot, uh, a lot slower. So um, with flak baiting, the, the goal is, uh, as a CV player, is not to get those flak bursts come directly at you. What you want to do, the computer is pretty adept at aiming this flak in the direction that you're heading in. So try to bait the flak to, to head your way. Um, and then once you once you get used to seeing those flak bursts and when they're going to hit, um, you'll have a much higher advantage, especially with dive bombers. So I'll just run through this video you hear. As you can see, I'm approaching the CV directly now. I'm just going to spin off to the left a little bit. And uh, just wait for the flak to start kicking in. New comes the burst. The flax to the left, and I just go right again. Two seconds. Burst to the left, and uh, I don't take any flak. And that that is the easiest way to dodge flak. It's just not to approach from the front. Just bait, just bait the flak to fire in the direction you're coming from. And eventually, when, once you do it a couple of times, you realize that on some ships, you can actually see the flak come in from the ship, so you can preempt it really, really well. Even before they burst in front of you, you start to just jig, jig to the right a couple of degrees, wait for the burst, jig to the right, wait for the burst, jig to the right. That generally will get you through every, every flak encounter. You've only got a small window to get through, um, but just don't approach from the front. Because you'll have to dodge and weave. You can still dodge and weave, but this approach works much better, especially with dive bombers. All right. Howdy, folks. So um, here I'll show you how to um, attack a cruiser from the side. So up front we have a Stalingrad. I'm not 100% sure if he has a fight player or not. Um, we call this a perpendicular drop. Um, it's only something you can do in the midway. Maybe the Victor, but I'm not sure. You want to drop roughly around there. You just come in at the angle, hard right, bring it down, nice and steady, and there you go, bap, bap. Um, Generally, you have um, enough time to do it again, but usually not from the back approach. If you approach from the front, uh, you're usually a little bit better off for the scene, but get away with it. Not perfect, but um, it went too bad. There you go. You never, ever, ever want to drop on a cruiser broadside with bombers because the chances of you doing any damage are virtually zero. Okay, um, you can't get away with that perpendicular drop in a um, Japanese ship because those planes just don't turn. Uh, they're not as agile as the midways. Okay, guys. So uh, now we're down to the nitty gritty. I'm going to show you how to do a purple, a perpendicular drop from the front. But you should only ever be doing this when you know that there's a stationary ship uh, or a ship going backwards. I'll let this video play through, and then I'll get into a bit more technical, and uh, I'll show you the the benefit of it. Let's just watch it for a second. So there, 
I made a couple of tactical mistakes in in that um, video. The first one was I should have gone after the palm and out on the out, out on the one line. That would have been a much better target for me. Um, but uh, I wanted to get rid of the Nevsky for obvious reasons because of his radar, and we had a, an Ostergotland over there. Um, I didn't know. I knew uh, the Hallen was in the cap, but I kind of I was kind of hoping I was going to get past him without him knocking his anti air on. He should have knocked his anti air on a lot sooner. I, I don't even think he hit the panic button, so he made a bit of a boo boo. Um, but the approach on the Nevsky, as an example, is quite perfect. Now I knew he was stationary. Uh, and the mistake that the Nevsky made was he didn't go forward. But as far as the drop goes. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty spot on. So let me just fast forward to about this point. As you can see here, the Haaland opens up for me, and I do start to lose planes. Now this is not ideal. Let me just stop it there. Um, so it's not an ideal approach. Bit of a boo boo by me. I knew there was an Odin there as well, so I knew I wasn't going to get up with this very very well. But I did do a bit of damage, um, and I did find the Haaland eventually. So. So it's not, not all a loss. So for the perpendicular drop, because that Nevsky is stationary or going backwards, I can attack from the front. And attacking from the front does have benefits. Um, but as far as the drop goes, you need to get that 90 degree angle on, on a ship. Now that is quite close. Let me just play it. And this is the, now this is the critical spot now, when to start your attack. Because I know the ship is going backwards. I can pretty much start it when you see that reticule there this cruiser is kind of it's pretty fast in reverse um if it was a battleship i might have gone a little bit further ahead um he's not doing any turns uh, i'll show you how to how to how to fix the turns now so he's going pretty straight so this year is about the time when you should start your approach i did hit a hard left down, nice and patient. 15.5k damage. Now, if I had attacked that Nevsky broadside as a battleship player, if I'd gone broadside and bombed him, bombed him straight on, probably wouldn't have done any damage at all. Matter of fact, I never even do that, never bother with it. Um, so, that's a good example of a perpendicular drop. I'm going to show you another one. Let's watch through it. This is on a Yamato just launched his fighters but that's a little bit too late so I'm gonna attack him from the back as he's going forward in my approach it's pretty slow and I can stop that and let's just watch it through and I kind of panic a little bit because he does have a fight just here so I didn't want to lose my plane so let's just reverse that back in a little bit a little bit So this is a critical moment when you're doing this drop because I noticed that the Yamato is turning out. So that gives me plenty of time. Um, if he's going straight or, or if he's turning out now, where my reticule is is a really good time to start my approach. It gives me all the time in the world. If he was, if he had turned in, if he was making a right-hand turn, I would have had to have gone forward a little bit to get a bit more of an angle so that. And I'll show you a good example of how to mitigate um, this drop in a minute with a Zhao. Um, if he was turning in, I would have gone a little bit further. I started my approach a little bit later. He got away with it a little bit on your 10k drop, but uh, but uh, it's a prime example of another perpendicular drop. Obviously, I had the Nev Nevsky there as well. Uh, and the mistake that the battleship made was he didn't drop his fighter soon enough. Um, it didn't do anything to me. If I was in a group of, of more than the four or five that I had, I definitely would have taken fight the damage there. So he did the right thing. He just did it a bit late. Uh, um, the other thing that he did wrong was if this is happening to you, and it's really hard to tell if this is happening to you, um, the mistake that he made, if I'm being if I'm being overcritical, is that when this is happening, you need to make that right down turn because it's a lot harder for me to do this to you when you're turning right. And I'll show you an example of this now with the, with the Zell. So I see the Zhao, it's pretty much set up for a pretty perfect drop. And there we go. Start my approach. See how he starts to turn out and I just can't get the angle on him? I drop. I do get a couple of hits, but nowhere near. Well, if he had turned, if 
he had turned out, sorry, turned in, if he had turned out um, instead of turning in, I would have had a far better. Let's just watch out again. So, you know what? At this point, at this point right here, I'm thinking I'm going to kill this Zhao. Lem K is pretty meaty. If he kept on, uh, pretty easy to achieve. Now, if he kept on that straight line or he had turned left, I hit my, I hit my, um, if I knew he was going to turn right, I would have waited a little bit longer to do the drop. But I didn't know that because that was a quite, especially if he's got the legendary. And see, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Right there, he does a hard right rudder, and uh, it's just not enough I need to get my planes to turn on. Him. I get what two penetrations for my K. So you still get the hit, but you don't get more than say two or three um so that's pretty much it yes okay guys so that's it for the perpendicular drop i hope it helps please don't do it to me um so once you master that perpendicular drop it really helps out with dds as well and um in this next video i'm going to show you a bad example of how to completely fuck it up as a dd so i'm going to watch it uh and then We'll go through it. So if you're a DD player and you want to, you're fed up of CVs killing you. I'm going to highlight all the things that this guy did wrong. So let's just let's just watch this. <laughs> well, let me stop that. Okay, so, so this, this, what did this guy do wrong? Shit, I, I don't know where to start. I really, really don't know where to start. Uh, from the beginning, I guess. Right. First thing he did wrong. Let me, let me just explain something to um, ED players here. Okay. We just stop it there. If you look down at my mini-map, it's kind of hard to see you because um, I'm actually watching a movie and the line's there. But if you have a look at the mini-map, I've got an 8.1 um, detection on my planes. Now, when I when a ship, when I get into that radius of a ship, it tells me that I'm detected. My planes are detected, okay? So, at the second that happens, I know exactly, exactly where that DD is. Um, it tells me... It tells me he's eight kilometers in front of me. The game has just started, so he's going to be he's going to be pretty much direct on. So I knew exactly he was there. Um, you might not know that that CVs can do this, but just be aware of this when you're out there on your own and you're thinking, how the fuck is this CV found me coming straight at me? It's because generally with the with the circle, when you're aiming towards something and your planes get detected, it's generally on the tip of the fucking circle. It's just within that radius. So you kind of know if you're going forward, you kind of know it's, it's within that arc, right? So these, this is how CVs are finding you. you can't, there's nothing you could do about it. Um, it's, it's just a, a game mechanic. Second mistake that this DD make, made was he's on his own. Now, really, do not do this, okay? Do not. If he was next to that nevsky and i'll talk um in a minute about flak stacking it's really important okay um if he was next to that nevsky i wouldn't even done any damage to him i probably would have gone after the cur first all right just stay close to your cruisers especially in the beginning man don't go sailing off on your own it's, you're going it, with cv players going to find you and they're going to fuck you up um so let's just watch it a bit more Okay, just bear with it. Now he's kind of sailing in a straight line here. I don't know what he's fucking playing at, right? But this, this, this is a recipe for disaster. He's making hardly no twists or turns. And that is... 
to be fair, dive bombing um, DD is is a bit of a mixed bag because there's a bit of RNG to it. And um, dive bombers, I mean, I did three zero damage incapacitation or three penetrations and three incapacitations. But sometimes um, you do incapacitation without any damage, which as a CV player is quite annoying. Uh, but when you get it right, it just completely obliterates them. And obviously, the, the DD now just took a big chunk of damage and he's thinking to himself, what the hell? He, he damaged cons because I think I took his engine. I'm not sure where it's rather probably. He tries to get the fuck out of dodge, but um, I, I made my approach right. Just a little thing to note as well. As let me just rewind that a little bit because it's something I do here. When you when you drop your first bombs on the DD, notice how I see that he's turning out there. Now I kind of guessed that he was going to do that anyway because um, he was kind of sailing towards the cap, and I was figuring. With battleships, you need to take note of this when you're going in for your second drop. It's kind of figuring he, he is going to turn out or he's going to keep on going on a straight line. Now, if I'd made a left hand, as a CV player, if I'd made a right hand turn after the drop, I would have had problems or I would have had to have done some more maneuvering to get onto the angle of his ass. Um, but I made the right call, I turned to the left. And now I'm back on his ass. This is an important thing to remember with cruisers. Just keep an eye on what direction they're turning in. I'm turning the opposite direction. And there you go. His engine's gone. His rudder's gone. He's lost the torpedo tube. He's down to 2,000 HP. Um, Alright, okay. So, that is not how you do it, alright? You have smoke for fuck's sake. You fucking use it. If you made the mistake of going out on your own, just don't be afraid to use smoke, man. Just fucking use it. And be aware that there's a CV. I didn't even think this guy even knew there was a CV in the fucking game until he got he got whapped. This is a this is the worst case scenario. Uh, but it happens all the time. Bad DD players get caught out by good CV players and people complain all the time about how overpowered CV players are and it's not the overpoweredness of them it's this shit this is what's happening and CVs are a pain in the ass man they are a pain in the ass I fucking hate them personally when I'm playing my DD I hate being spotted I, I love concealment about DDs but this guy did everything wrong everything that he did was just a complete and utter disaster from beginning to end so if you're playing DD or you're playing a cruiser, just learn from this guy's mistake, man, because he fucked it up. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. He completely fucked it up. So I'm going to show you an example now of a good DD player uh, dodging my dive bombers. Let's go back to the beginning. Um, now this is a this is a initially he does do a bit of a boo boo. I think he underestimates um, what I'm going to do to him. Um, he doesn't do anything wrong because I think he's a bit in an engagement with the Hindenburg. If if I was at Yu Yang when you're being approached by dive bombers, you definitely the better situation for you to be in here is to be facing the dive bombers. Now I no I, can I go back a bit further. I knew he was there because I think he fired earlier on. He was spotted. I think he is engaged with the Hindenburg. But if he hadn't been spotted as well, um, this would have made it a bit more awkward for me. Let's just watch it through again. There is an important lesson. It makes a bit of a boo boo here because I think I don't even think he thinks I'm going to attack him. For some people, when you see dive bombers, they think he's not going to bother. The drop is pretty good. This is a critical moment now. Now I notice that he's turning off to the left, he's turning out, so I'm going to make a right hand turn here. But what he does after this is the right thing to do. I don't know if he did it on purpose, but you, you can see that it completely fucks me up. Not only have I not got time to get, I want to get an angle on him, but I just can't. And I'm just, at this point, I'm just like, oh fuck it, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to catch it, I'm losing planes here. I just, I just dumped my planes just to get him back to the CD, and I moved on. 
Um, so that's how you do it, okay? That is how you do it. That shimmy was now you didn't don't do it, and that guy showed a good example of how you did it. Um, but like I said, ideally it would have been better if he'd done that approach to me um, in the beginning. If he turned into me, I would have been forced to have dropped him from the front. Uh, and when you're doing that, it shortens the amount of time I have to make my drop, which means I have to drop higher, which means it's probably going to miss. Um, and then of course he did the right thing. Of turning into my bombers. If the if if you're being dropped out from the back, and they drop in on on your DD and you're going that way, and the and the CV drops you on the back, just keep an eye out for where the planes are going. I know it's hard because looking up in the air and engaging a Hindenburg is quite difficult to do. So I'm guessing it was a bit more luck on his approach. But it, it, as a DD, just keep this in mind. If you see his dive bombers attack you and peel off to the right, turn to the right. If they peel off to the left, turn to the left, and that'll give him a much harder time to attack you. Akuru players generally don't attack DDs, um, but good CV, good midway players will will do this. So um, if there's a midway on the map, just keep this in mind, okay? And this works for cruisers as well, um, especially fast rudder ones. So um, if you've got rudder shift on your cruiser, this works as well. Wherever you see those bombers go off to, you follow them, okay? Get the, as a CV player, if it's a cruiser, I have to go way, way further out. Um, and, some, and sometimes I have to get into the flak bubble as well so, to make my turn back in. And then when my, making my turn back in, frontal approach is always harder for the dive bombers than the, the rear approach. The rear approach gives me all the time in the world to make minor adjustments. If he's turning, I can make minor adjustments. But from the front, not only do I not have the time, but if he, if he makes a turn to the left or t turn to the right, I can't compensate for it. Because to do that, I need to go to the right and then come back in. So just keep those bombers in front of you, not behind you. We don't want dive bombers behind you. All right? It's a good lesson, man. A good fucking lesson. Hey, guys. So in this video, there's a couple of things I want to highlight. Uh, not only does my midway get a uh, double drop in, there's also a bit of a purple, perpendicular drop, um, poor teamwork, and um, a, another highlight of what happens when you're on your own against a good CV player. So let's just watch a video, and I'll go through it with you. It was a good approach. I know I want to attack from the back. Uh, the Puerto Rico makes the mistake of turning out, which gives me a lot more time to do my perpendicular. In the end, it kind of ends up not being a perpendicular. But give him a bit of a whack. He's lucky to get away with just 14k, to be honest. I get two fires on him. He turns out, and I, I kind of guessed he was going to do that, which gives me an ideal approach for my second drop. I've still got a good amount of planes left. Approach. Perfect approach. Could have waited a little bit longer there. And again, another 12 and a half K. Didn't get a fire that time, so we got away with it a little bit lucky. If I got a fire, that would have been 30 to 35 K drop. Um, now, I kind of explained all those things. Two mistakes. He's on his own. Completely on his own. But he wasn't completely on his own. There's a fucking Haaland right next to him. Now, I knew this when I was going up there, because initially I wanted to go up to spot the Haaland for the Edinburgh. Because the George, I knew the Haaland was going to be a bit of a problem. And while I don't really like attacking Haaland, sometimes it's necessary to at least get him lit, okay? Um, that Haaland allowed me to get two drops in our Puerto Rico. And if, if we take a little look at this year, look at my bubble. Look at my, that's eight kilometers, Aris. There's no way was a Haaland not six kilometers uh, within range of knocking his anti air on. He didn't knock his anti air on, and he fucking let his teammate take all the damage. And that bad, bad fucking play that is. Because even if he just knocked it on for about four or five seconds, I don't think it's a lot that could have hit him there. He wouldn't have been spotted, but we knew where he was, right? So he just let his. He's not, I don't even know if he's in a division with him. I don't think he is. So he literally just let his teammate take all that damage, and he probably. When he came out of it, he's probably chuffed. If I was in that Puerto Rico, I'd be seriously pissed off with that talent. Seriously. Because I don't know where he is, but he's definitely within the bubble. Definitely. If he knocked his anti-air on there, if he knocked his anti-air on there, I would never have got a second drop. I'm kind of guessing. See, the Edinburgh's hydro. So he's up here somewhere. He's up here. Which is even worse, because nothing could have shot him there. Bad, bad, bad Haller. Bad Haller. Okay. So if you're a DD player, especially in a Haller, just be aware, right? 
Locking anti air on is a good thing to do. Um, especially when, you know, with the flak as well. I talked about the flak bubble in the last video with the Haaland. Just knock it on, man. If I can help your teammates out for the love of God, you know? You, you got that guy killed, really. He went from, what, what did he have in the beginning? 70k? 60k, he went from 60k. He died shortly after that. I think uh, somebody killed him, got a fire on him, and he died. Um, He's still alive there, but he did die. Uh, so, yeah, so just be aware of that, DD players, okay? Even if you're not in Haaland, even if you're in, like, a shimmy or something, just knock your hair off, hey, hey, on, because it really, 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 really fucking helps. Because while I'm making that approach, if I'm in your flak bubble, um, the damage you do is deadly. I know the continuous damage might not be good, but the flak damage will cause me fucking problems. So, uh, just be aware. Okay, and this is just quick highlight now of what I've tried to explain the problems that I've been going on about, about attacking from the front and everything. I mean, I know I've said that like fucking 10 times already, but let me just show you an example of how difficult it is um, to, to do an attack here. Petra's anti-air opens up quite soon. And the dodge to the right a little bit, the dodge on the flak, I keep going. Um, and now, now, see, this is where the problem was. I started my approach too late, but he kind of... It was a mistake on my part, I could have done better there, I could have started my approach a bit earlier. But because I did that, I had to drop. As my planes are coming up and start coming down, I didn't wait until they're all the way down, I had to drop right there. I still got a hit, I think, from it. It's a 10k, but I should have done more than that, really. Uh, the, only thing, the only thing about attacking from the front is, it does set you up nicely for an attack from the back. This is kind of a perpendicular drop here. Pretty sure it's fucked. It's fucked anyway, but uh, I, w I would have killed him if uh, if that. So attacking from the front as is as a benefit of the second attack. This, the next drop is going to be um, a good one. But um, when you are attacking from the front, you are going to have to start your approach a lot earlier. Okay, guys, uh, so let's move on from all that. Now I want to try to tell you about uh, dive bombing stuff in smoke. It's it's not something that's easily taught. It takes a little bit of intuition, but after a couple of thousand games, kind of get the gist for it a little bit. So I'm going to try to help you out um, and try to show you uh, what to do, because I've had some good successes with attacking stuff in smoke. Um, so let's just watch this video and then I'll run through it with you. Destination reached. Autopilot mode disabled. Okay. Uh, let's just go back. Now, attacking something in smoke is not something I recommend. Uh, the biggest problem is, and it's a totally fucked up mechanic, is that um, if if there's something, if your planes are spotted by anything, a fighter, another another uh, ship or anything, that that ship can can shoot you from smoke. And I think that's a bit fucked up, to be honest with you. I mean, how can you shoot something when you're in fucking smoke, right? Um, but it's a game mechanic they're not going to fix anytime soon. So attacking something in smoke is, some, uh, is something that you can do when you're kind of, something was spotted briefly and you're kind of flying over it. But, um, but the reason I hung around here was because there was nothing that was spotting me, basically. And I wanted to help that thunder out a little bit. Uh, let's just watch a bit through that. I didn't, I don't, not sure if I knew how much HP he had. But um, I didn't have any fighters to drop. So I kind of just didn't have anything else to do they're kind of making a mess of things on the right hand side so i really really wanted to get over there but i hung around um now as at this point i'll just go back a little bit further here as i'm flying over it's not that he does two mistakes it's just there's two two things that give him away the first was that he fired and the second one was a ring popped 
Now, I knew that he was creeping forward a little bit at this point. I knew exactly where he was, and I knew that he was creeping forward a little bit. And because, obviously, of the uh, circumference of the circle, I knew exactly where he was. He's, he's, like, right there, and he's probably creeping forward. He might even have hit the brakes a little bit. So I knew where I was going, going to go. Um, if I saw another circle pop, I would have adjusted on my approach. But, uh, but he kept firing, and that's the important part. He kept firing. It was not easy to do, not easy to do, and you can see I'm keeping an eye on his guns and seeing where they're coming from. I made a little bit of a boo-boo there because I, sh I kind of turned a little bit and I shouldn't have done that. I should have, I sh I should have had my approach a bit better. Now, there, let's just go back a little bit. Destination Let's watch this now. Right, so his front guns are fired and his back guns are fired. And if you just follow the trajectory, I'm pretty bang on the money there. The back end, the back end is there. Well, it could be the front gun, it doesn't matter. But the, the back end is there. He's aiming in this direction. I know this because because he, he, he made a move and the circle popped. Um, so I know I know exactly where he is. And to wait a little bit. I want to get my circle as tight as possible. And I'm, at this point, there you go. He had gone backwards a little bit and then he's creeping forward and I get and I pretty much get the hit. There's a lot of RNG involved. Doesn't always work. Um, it works better with fast firing DDs like a Harugumo or a Daring or something. With a Daring, it's particularly effective. Uh, so just keep your eyes open for the circles where they pop in and um, just watch to see if he's firing and he's moving backwards or he's going forwards. Just keep an eye on that. But just look for the tracers, really. Um, they'll give themselves away. I think that Thunderer would have killed him eventually. I think actually, it, yeah, the Thunder actually got him spotted. But he, I, I dropped before he was spotted. Um, and he died, and there you go. That's how to attack smoke. But don't really bother with it too much. Um, if there's other other planes spotting you, because you will lose your planes, especially with the Smolensk, you'll just wipe them out. All right. Um, okay, so we're actually getting towards the end of the video here. There's just a couple more things that um, I just want to highlight, and that's uh, teamwork. Teamwork is a bit of a big subject. Um, if you're playing with teammates then obviously you want to look out for them. You want to give them something to shoot at and you want to defend them as best as possible. Sometimes you see that the flank is folding and you go over there to help them out. Um, but generally, most CV players are trying to help someone at some point. All this bullshit about fucking CV players going for maximum damage, don't give a fuck about this and that. There's 11 other players on this fucking map, okay? Now, in this game, uh, that Soyuz, which is on full health, by the way, and sailing away from a Yamato, um, what is that, a Mogador and a Richelieu and a CV, um, although he's got an Odin in the cap, the Odin managed to cap, that Soyuz is running away, he's full health, and he's been abusing me all game. Uh, let me see if there's, see if there's uh, anything in here. No. If you scroll up a little bit, go back a little bit, he says CV minus one, you fucking retard. He was doing all this stuff, right? Now, normally, I don't, I don't bite because I get it almost every game. But just be aware, lads, that I can't look after 11 people. I can only try to look after one. And in this instance, even though he was crying out for help, I don't know why. You know, I made the tactical decision that this Montana was overextending and I knew that he had Haaland in front of him. Now, my, my intention was to come down here. I wanted to, to kill the Zhao because I'd already got him down to about 20% HP and I wanted to finish him off. But the Montana, if we just go back a little bit, the Montana actually asks for data, intelligence data. So he's asked for help, basically. It's at this point I realized that he's been spotted, um, which means that the Haaland had come out. So I could have, going after the Haaland, obviously, it's against, you know, part of me that just doesn't want to do that. And when you get a little bit further on, see, Zhao gets spotted, and there he is, looks on Sam K. I could have killed that Zhao. Could easily have killed that Zhao. Um, yeah, no problem at all. But I make the conscious effort that I'm not going to, I'm going to help the Montana up, because Montana's putting himself into a bit of shit here. So, kind of like, uh, it's too late now, I'll go after the Haaland. So I'm actually helping a teammate out here, while being abused by somebody for not helping them out, okay? So just don't abuse people. If they should see me play it, go ahead, man. So I get a pretty, pretty decent drop on Haaland. Kind of hurt a little bit. 
so we've got a couple of planes left. I could have bailed out here, but I, I did drop some bikes in Bubba, but they fucking done that second. Um, I knew I wasn't going to get another hit. I'd be lucky if I did, but I just wanted to keep the hand in this so that the Montana would get another drop on him. Do get two bombs off to do any damage. Um, two and a half K. That's not bad actually, it's pretty good drop on Halen. But look now, he's clicking on me. Fucking clicking on me. You know, it's being abusive. And uh, it didn't end there. It just went on and on. And uh, the Montana, I eventually went back and I killed the Halland. And then I killed the Zhao. And the Nevsky died, the Henri, I think. Um, Things has begun to un unravel on the other side. So I went over there in a second. I'll show you. That guy was very naughty a very bad person and uh it, it, very abusive don't abuse people do yourself a favor go out and get matchmaking monitor okay google matchmaking monitor discord go to the discord channel um download matchmaking monitor load it up and if you see a cv player who's fucking unicum don't abuse them man they, they're not going to help you if you abuse them. There's ways to ask people for help. And calling them a fucking retard is not the way to do it. So let me just show you the next one. Um, I think this is the same map. So just before I show you the last video, this is the last but one. just want to highlight um, the use of geometry. There's a Worcester up in front of me. He's eight and a half kilometers away. Um, using geometry works really well for dive bombers and... Um, Torpedoes, but it does you've got to be careful with rockets because something happens to the reticule and it, it all gets a little bit bonky. You can still do it, but this it's something weird happens and sometimes it's just a total fail. Um so I so I pro I don't normally attack Worcesters, but I can see on the mini map that uh, that I'm nose on to him now, so I could probably get a good drop in here. Just kind of keep geometry between me and him. As long as I can get in that flat bubble, and there I'm in it now, and as I come out of it, pretty much out of the flak bubble. He does get one flak off, but I'm within the flak bubble now. So the continuous damage on the Worcester is still kind of hard, and I am getting into the Yamato's flak bubble. So I just make the drop. It's a pretty good drop. I do 10k. He was lucky to get with a 10, and he had 3 pence. If I'd had another 1 or 2, it would have been a lot higher than that. Um, so that's just a quick, quick example of how to use geometry, um, especially with torpedoes. Just learn, learn how to approach a ship with an island between you and and, and you pray, and uh, you'll, you'll be okay. Um, and this is the last one now, I think. What is it? Our victory is in sight. So this is this is the Soyuz who's been abusing me all game. Now, intentionally, I went. I wanted to kill a Yamato because I wanted uh, the extra kill. Um, but as things unfolded... I'd actually managed to kill him. Actually, it was the Bonnock that killed him. <laughs> it was the Bonnock that killed him, so he didn't manage that. But it was at this point I remembered that this guy had been pissing me off the entire fucking game. And uh, just to wrap the video up, I just thought, you know what? Uh, fuck him. You wanna be a dick? You wanna booze me off fucking game? Throw me off? Be an arsehole? Then. Piss my ass. disciplinary penalty was imposed on you for friendly fire. Worth it. Totally and utterly worth it. So, and he did abuse me after that as well. He got really abusive after that. And I didn't even say anything. And everybody in the chat was like lolling and everything. And it just, you know. If you're going to be an arsehole in this game and be abusive in chat, you deserve everything you get, okay? Be nice, man. Stop fucking trolling. Just be nice. Because people ain't going to be nice to you when you're fucking being dicks to them. Ah, uh, okay. Right. It's a long video. I got a lot of editing to do. Don't forget to give me the thumbs up and help me get to a thousand subscribers so I can earn enough money to buy a pizza on Sunday. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care out there. See you soon.